Leaning against the railing, Michael struck what he considered a sophisticated pose. Greg pointed the camera up and focused carefully. It took a short while for his fingers to locate the shutter button. Okay, ready? Say cheese! Cheddar, Michael said, grinning down at Greg as he held his pose against the railing. Greg centered Michael in the viewfinder frame, then pressed the shutter button. The camera clicked and flashed. Then it made an electric whirring sound. A slot pulled open on the bottom, and a cardboard square slid out. Hey, it's one of those automatic developing cameras, Greg exclaimed. He pulled the square of cardboard out and examined it. Look, the picture is starting to develop. Let me see, Michael called down, leaning on the railing. But before he could start down the stairs, everyone heard a loud crunching sound. They all looked up to the source of the sound, and saw the railing break away, and Michael go sailing over the edge. No! Greetings, Internet, and welcome to Bookworm's Goosebumps Retrospective. Today, we prep up with number four, to say cheese, and die. On a boring summer day, Greg and his friends decide to visit the old abandoned Kaufman house to see if anything spooky is in there. When in the basement, Greg finds a camera and starts to take pictures. But the pictures come out weird. They always show the people in moments of fear, panic, or death. And shortly after taken, they come true. This is no ordinary camera. But can Greg fix it before he must say cheese? Shut up, Bill. Say cheese and die if the premise didn't show you follows a lot like the Twilight Zone episode, A Most Unusual Camera. Stein has mentioned he is a big Twilight Zone fan and was inspired by Rob Serling, which just makes sense when you think about it. This cover was really creepy to me as a kid. Just seeing the family of skeletons made me think it was about skeletons attacking people, which of course wasn't what happened, but that is what I thought it was about when I was a kid. Maybe I should have read the tagline, a picture's worth a thousand screams! Now the book itself is downright solid. The first half helps set up the events, making you wonder just what is happening with the camera, and then halfway through, unleashes everything on Greg, making him feel helpless as an otherworldly force pushes the events on him. The second half is a little mixed for me, mainly cause the second half can drag. Like after the halfway point, Greg brings the camera to his friend's birthday party shortly after three terrible events happen at the same time. You know something is wrong with the camera! Don't bring it along just cause your friend needs to have a moment to know the camera is evil! Maybe it's just me having a DON'T DO IT moment there! But seriously, it doesn't really add much to the overall plot and like I said, made it drag its feet for a bit. But the climax makes up for it. It gives us the answers to the situation, but still leaves enough mystery to play with our minds. Not to mention, it can leave you on the edge of your seat to see how Greg will get out of it. Like I said, it's a pretty solid Goosebumps book that has some great moments, drags a bit, but makes up for it with a tense climax. Fun fact, the TV episode of Say Cheese and Die had Greg cast by Ryan Gosling. Yes, the one you were thinking of. I have nothing to say about it, just thought I'd let you know. What about you, Internet? What's your opinion? Till next time, have a scary day.